In this video, we're going to be discussing the average value of a function as well as the mean value theorem for integrals. So imagine we have a function f shown in the graph here, and we have some continuous interval that has the leftmost point a and the rightmost point b. Then we can calculate the average of that function. So if we just think about this as, say, a bunch of rectangles like we did uh, before we defined the integral, we could take the leftmost points and we could get a set of points that look something like this. Okay, now in terms of rectangles, we could ask ourselves, what is the average area of all of those rectangles? Okay, and then we could get a value for that. Well, with indefinite integrals, remember these rectangles are becoming infinitely small. So if we get rid of all these, really what we're asking for is the height of all of these extremely thin slices. And then we're going to divide them by the total distance between A to B because we have infinitely many or infinitely thin slices going vertically. And then we'll divide it by the distance horizontally. So what does this look like? This says that the average value of a function is equal to the integral of f of x dx. So this is uh, the area underneath the curve here. And then we're going to divide that by the length of the interval. So uh, you can think of this as 1 over b minus a, or we can think of this as the length of the interval here. Okay, and that'll give us the average value. So let's see that put into practice. Let's find the average value of the square root, or sorry, the cubed root of x on the interval from 8 to 27. Okay, uh, excuse my really poor drawing here, but the cubed root of x, well, we might think of it as being a curve that looks a little bit something like that. And then we'd be looking for the average value from 8 to 27. I don't have a life-sized scale here, but let's just do this through algebra. So to make this more straightforward, I'm just going to write out the entire formula and then we'll make some substitutions. So we know that the average value of f is going to be 1 over the length of the interval, so this will be b minus a, times the area under the curve. So this will be the integral on f of x dx. So this is our formula that we can work with. I'm going to make some substitutions. First of all, I'm going to plug in the interval. So this will be 27 minus 8, and this will also determine the upper and lower bounds on our integral here. And now we're going to replace f of x with our function that we are evaluating. So this will be the cubed root of x multiplied by dx. Now we know that when we have cubed roots or square roots and we have integrals, the easiest way to use these are to convert the form. So instead of writing the cubed root of x, I'm going to rewrite this as x to the one-third. And at this point, it is just a matter of uh, doing the computation. So 1 over 27 minus 8 is 1 over 19. Now we have to do the integral from 8 to 27 of x to the one-third dx. So this will be x to the four-thirds over four-thirds from... 8 to 27. Hopefully you're able to do that integral. This is just the power rule in reverse. And now we can do some plugging in. So I'm going to simplify things a little bit. I'm going to make this 1 over 19. I'm going to pull the negative 4 thirds on the bottom out. So this is the same thing as multiplying by uh, 3 fourths. And now we're going to have uh, 27 to the four-thirds, which is the upper bound, minus the lower bound, so that'll be eight to the four-thirds. Okay, now at this point, we're, we're pretty much done, but we can put these into numbers if we want. So one times three is three, 19 times four is going to be 76. Uh, 27 to the four-thirds, well, this is going to be the same thing as three to the four, which is 81. And then we have 8 to the 4 thirds, which is the same thing as 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So our end result is going to be 3 
times 65 all over 76. And I don't think that this can be reduced nicely. So where do we get the 65? Well, that's 81 minus 16. Okay. So this is the average value of the function, x to the cube root, on the interval 8 to 27. Okay, and uh, you can easily verify this by plugging it into Wolfram Alpha. It has an average value function, and you can see the graph. So if you ever want to verify your answers for these things, uh, Wolfram Alpha or any other free site that does those calculations can help you verify that. Now, that is the average value of a function. But there's a question we have, right? It's, a, it's an interesting thing that we can do for a particular functions, so let's generalize and let's ask ourselves. If we have a function that's continuous on an interval, then is there going to be some point c in that interval where the average is equal to f of c? Now, what do I mean here? Well, let's take this function right here. This is a straight, uh, this is a straight line from a to b, and because of symmetry, we can see that the average is going to be right in the center here. So, uh, this right here would be the average value. Now our question is, is there some point for which some c, I'll do this in red, where on that curve we have f of c equal to the average. So in other words, we're asking for the point on the curve that hits that average box. And what we'll find is that actually for any continuous function on a to b, this will be true. And this is called the mean value theorem for integrals. So if f is continuous on a to b, then we say that there's some point c in the interval from a to b such that uh, f of c is equal to the average of the function. So uh, you could write this as 1 over b minus a times the integral of f of x dx, or we could just call this f average. So uh, usually in textbooks you would see something like f of c equals f of average, and this would be your mean value theorem for integrals. So we're going to do two problems here. I'm going to show you a harder problem first, and then we're going to do an easier one, because I just want to show you a lot of the manipulation. So here's two pieces of information that we have. We want to find a number b such that the average value of a function is 3 on some interval from 0 to b, and our function is f of x is equal to negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. So, okay, what is this asking? We're saying that we have a function, negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2. We want the average value to be 3, but we need to define an interval where that happens. There might be two intervals where that happens. So let's use the formula and play around with these things. So what do we know? Well, we need f of c equal to f of average, which is going to be 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Okay, so what do we have from the question that we can plug into the formula? Okay, well we know that f of the average is equal to 3. So we can plug 3 in there. And then we're going to have 1 over b minus a. Well, the end point is b, but the leftmost point, the bottom point, is 0. So we're going to have 1 over b minus 0. Okay, and just, for, just to simplify this right away, let's call this 1 over b. b minus 0 is b. Now, we need to have the integral from 0 to b, since 0 starts our integral and b is the end point, of our function f of x dx. So this will be the integral from 0 to b of negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 2 dx. Okay, so now we're trying to find b, and we have all the tools we need to find b at this point. So we'll just work things out. Okay, so 3 is going to be equal to 1 over b, and now we're going to do the integral here. So I'll do this step by step. So negative 3x squared becomes negative 3x cubed over 3. 6x, the antiderivative of that, is going to be 6x squared over 2. And then the antiderivative of 2 is going to be 2x over 1, or just the same thing as 2x. And we'll evaluate this from b to 0. Okay, so this will be 
1 over b times, well, let's put b into all of these things. So we're going to have negative 3b cubed over 3. So we're going to get negative b cubed plus, we'll have 6b squared over 2. So this will be uh, 3b squared plus 2b over 1. So that'll be 2b. Now, when we subtract 0, these are all going to come out to 0. So we'll take this, we'll subtract 0, and we'll be left with 1 over b times all of this. Okay, so give ourselves a little bit more room here. We have uh, 3 is equal to all this. So I'm going to distribute the 1 over b. So I'll divide all of these terms inside the brackets by b. So we're going to end up with negative b squared plus 3b plus 2. And now this is just a matter of solving. So uh, we're going to take the 3 over to the right side. So we're going to have, actually, hold on a second. We want our negative b squared to be positive. So let's take all of these terms on the right side and then move them over to the left. So we're going to have b squared minus 3b. OK, then we'll have 3 minus 2, so plus 1 is equal to 0. And now we just have to solve. OK, so uh, doesn't look like it's going to be an easy quadratic to solve, so let's just use our quadratic equation. So we're going to have b is going to be equal to negative, negative 3. So that's 3 plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared. So that'll be negative 3 squared. So that's 9 minus 4 times 1 times 1, which is 4, all over 2. I had to sing the song in my head to remember what the quadratic formula was. It's been a while. Uh, so this will reduce down to 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. Okay, so that's what b is, which means we actually have two values. We have two intervals where the average of this function is equal to 3. We have the interval from 0 to 3 plus root 5 over 2, and we have the interval from 0 to 3 minus root 5 over 2. Okay, so there's two solutions to this question. And yeah, this one is a little bit more tough algebraically. We have to use the quadratic equation. But again, we can see how given an average, we can even determine the interval where that average is satisfied given a certain function, which is pretty cool. So the next question is a little bit simpler. This is just asking us to find the point on the axis on a to b where we have that point where f of c is equal to the average for a function. So again, we're just going to write out everything that we know so far about our formula. So we have that f of c is going to be equal to the average, which is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now let's see what we have here. Well, we don't know c or f of c yet, but what we do know is our function and our interval. So let's work with that right now. Okay, so 1 over well, b minus a, so our end point is 3 and our beginning point is 1, so this will be 1 over 3 minus 1, times the integral from 1 to 3 of 1 over x dx. Okay, so this will be equal to uh, 1 half times well, let's take the antiderivative of 1 over x, which this is one of the special ones. This is ln x, so log x, from 3 to 1. Okay, so this will be equal to 1 half times ln 3 minus ln of 1. Okay, and if you don't remember, ln 1 here is just equal to 0. So this is essentially the same thing as just ln 3, and we'll divide it by 2. So we found our average. We know that f of c is supposed to be equal to ln 3 over 2, but that's not the entire question. The question asked for the value of c such that f of c is equal to f of f, to the average. So what do we do now? Well, again, we're looking for f of c. So what we'll do is we'll plug c back into our original function of 1 over x. So now what we're doing 
is we're trying to find the point where 1 over c is equal to ln of 3 over 2. So if we multiply everything by c and everything by 2 and we divide it by ln 3, we'll get our solution. So this is a fancy way of saying that we're just going to switch things around here. So doing the algebra there, we would get that 2 over ln 3 is equal to c. And there is our value. So we found the c such that f of c is equal to the average. The average happens to be ln 3 over 2. So that should be what our f of c is. So we plug c into our original function and then did some algebraic manipulation to figure out what c should be. And again, I recommend once you do these problems, plug them into Wolfram Alpha, plug them into a website, see visually what's going on and confirm that you've got these things correct. Because part of doing these problems is not only developing the algebraic skills and understanding the theorems, but also seeing enough examples visually that when you're given a problem and you're given an interval, you understand what a good or sane answer would be like. You get a general idea of the shape of the graphs and what your average value should be around. So it's just a good way to verify your understanding. As always, if you have questions, comments, anything, leave them down below, and I will try to get to them if I can.